call this what works at work. So where you are working, is it in a company, a small business? Are you working from home or do you travel for work? Whatever it is, what is it that keeps you rolling up every day to do that job? Is it because you need the money and it's a really good, they have a really good super package or you get really good wages? Is it that you have a great package with them that you're able to salary sacrifice? Do you really enjoy what you're doing? Because there's so many different things that we have over the years, different jobs and different workplaces and different people that we work with. I want you to really have a look. What keeps you going back to this work? Have you thought about leaving? If you have, what are the pros and cons of leaving and what's the pros and cons of staying? Have you really nutted that out and written it down on paper? What is it that keeps you rolling up every day to the same job every time? Are you in a factory where it is very repetitious work and you are making sure that it is quality? What you're pushing out is really good. Someone said to me a little while ago, oh, I just work in a factory. And I went, well, what are you producing? They said, we produce this little part for a computer. And I went, okay. So if someone doesn't have that little part, can they keep operating what they're doing? And he said, no. And I said, then you are performing a very important task, aren't you? And he went, oh, yeah, I suppose I am. Every single work, whether you are from the CEO or you are the cleaner, every single person in that area or in that business of work is really important. Because if one lets that, um, their area down, then it lets the whole team down. Then it means that work doesn't work properly. A business is like a machine. One part doesn't work, the whole machine is going to get clunk, 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 and it's not gonna work. I love that ad. You know where the guy has got a helicopter because he's won the lotto. And he says, can you fix my helicopter? I've got to go and pick up the kids because it goes clunk, clunk, clunk. And a business is the same. Which part of the business is going clunk, clunk and not working properly? Is it your department? Are you stopping everything else from working because you've had a bad day? or something's happened in your life and you can't really keep going and working. There are so many things as to what keeps us going. I loved all the jobs that I've had. There was one that I loved my work, but I couldn't stand the company because the company kept changing the goalposts and that really annoyed me. They were quite happy to change the goalposts when the hierarchies were wanted to get, you know, um, oh, I've just forgotten the word. They wanted to reach budget nationally, but if I missed out by $5 of getting my bonus for that month, that wasn't okay. I wasn't allowed to change my goalpost. So there was a double standard and that really annoyed me. So I left. I did leave them with a 15 point reason why they would keep losing their reps. And this is now 11 years down the track and they're still doing the same thing and they still can't keep their reps. That's the reason why I left that business. Every other business I loved because they operated correctly. When I left one of my, uh, another business, I, I left it because it was time for me to move on. There was nothing wrong with the business. Everything was fine. I loved it. It was just time for me to get off the road, to get off and doing that. And that was the year that Tara had um, broken her neck. It was time for me to stay home and create something different instead of traveling around for work. So that's when I helped a friend start up a business. So when it comes to you and have a look at all the businesses you've been in, all the different companies you've been in, the different roles that you've been in, 
Which one have you enjoyed the most and why? And I can almost guarantee that none of it was because of the money. You can make all the money in the world and be miserable, and you can make a few dollars and be happy. There was one particular um, person that came past my chair one day, and he used to always roll up in a suit. He always looked good. It was a, it was a Thursday evening, come in, get his hair cut, looked great. And I hadn't seen him for a while, and he was very high up in this company. He rolled in one day in a flannelette shirt, pair of jeans, and looking very scruffy. And I went, oh my goodness, are you on holidays? I haven't seen you for ages. He said, no, I quit my job. And I went, really? Well, he proceeded to tell me that this guy was um, early 50s. I think he was 51 or 52. In a matter of six months, he lost four good mates around the same age. One dropped with an aneurysm, one was a heart attack. I think one came off the motorbike with an accident and hit a tree or something, and I can't remember the fourth. But it really got to him that he's spending all this time at work, making sure everything's going, he's got a company car, earns really good money, and he has a wife, three children that are all going to private school. He realized that there is more to life than rolling up in the office early hours of the morning and leaving late in the afternoon or early evening. So one time when he was sitting in the boardroom with a whole lot of directors all sitting around and, and nutting things out, he just got up and he says, I've had enough. This isn't important work and I'm leaving. And he left his car keys, left everything there and got a taxi home. His wife, he's, he said, I still see the picture on his face. And he said, my wife nearly had a heart attack. She was just gobsmacked and she went white because she just thought the kids, the money. He said, because I've, I'm good at what I did, I had money put away. But he said, the last six weeks have been the happiest in my life. He said, I get up, I go to work, I come home and I don't worry about anything. And he was a delivery driver in a bigger truck. He said it was fantastic and it was the best $1,800 he'd, he'd brought in, as in a week, rather than the hundreds of thousands that he was making before. He said his wife's still not coping, but realized that we're doing okay. And he said, I get to see my friends. I get to be there with my kids. I get to take the wife out for tea. I get to do the things I need to do at home. So even though he was on, you know, I think from what I gathered, it was around about the $400,000 a year, is he was very happy going down to the 80, 90,000 a year. Whether he will continue doing that, I didn't end up seeing him. I saw him for a while, but then I ended up leaving the business. What he's doing now, I don't know. But he obviously needed that time for himself, his family, his wife, and for his own self-esteem to be able to connect back with himself and his family and his friends. And that's where we're getting at is what keeps you at work. Is it to be able to give your family a better life, but you're not actually in their life? Or is it for you to say, I earn this and I do that, and self-praise. If that's what you love, great. There's no right or wrong as to what you do or what you get out of work. I know some that are just love the work and they get there and they earn the big dollars and they get the promotions and they love it. And that's okay. There's no right or wrong as long as you're doing what you want for you. And if your work and what you're doing at work, you're not enjoying, have a look around. Maybe it's time to move. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Kerry Hortrow, and my business is brain thinking.